Welcome to the In Web Browsers and IPFS GUI team weekly sync call. As is customary, we shall do a round of what I worked on last week that I'd like to highlight to the community and what I plan to work on next week. Um, we'll go in document order, which starts with Lidl. Incredible. Lidl, would you like to share with us what you were working on last week? Um, let me like share my screen. Uh, it's not a US world paper, but still a good one. Still a good one. Yep. So uh, updates were mostly work around IPFS Companion and things that uh, happen around it. So uh, I s allocated some time to finally get uh, embedded JS IPFS uh, work with, uh, within a web extension context in Brave. And to do that, I had to do some uh, uh, refactoring of uh, JS IPFS, the way it initializes HTTP servers. Uh, for historical reasons, it was bound to uh, command line command uh, JS IPFS daemon, and a lot of orchestration that was not related to HTTP servers happened there. So I did a minimum uh, decoupling of HTTP logic so that that logic could be used in other contexts than the command line. Uh, so this is a work in progress uh, PR. I, I don't want it, like, I, I, I'm not sure if it won't change or I don't have to add anything else to this. So uh, it's a draft for now. Uh, but uh, what's interesting is in in this work uh, in uh, Brave build with Chrome Sockets branch of IPFS Companion. So I managed uh, with those changes to JS IPFS and some other uh, small tweaks, I managed to get uh, HTTP servers start with HD within HTTP browser. So, <laughs> and with, that happened before, but now the HTTP servers are actual servers started by JS IPFS. So uh, if you're interested, links are in, uh, in notes, uh, but I believe uh, I may be able to show you a quick, uh, quick demo, maybe. Uh, so uh, this is Brave. This is Brave. Uh, this is a like custom build of Brave, but I should be able to. Uh, there's some like ongoing effort to whitelist also a beta channel, so we will be able to show people and ask people to play with it with actual Brave without a special build, but for now it's running on a special build. Um, so this is a IPFS companion built from the, uh, that uh, feature branch. And now when I start it, you can see some stuff happened. And messages uh, are not like polished yet because those were meant for shell, but uh, uh, you can see there's uh, JS IPFS running. Uh, most of uh, <laughs> UI is still uh, not updated to take advantage of all those new powers. But uh, what happened behind the scenes, maybe I'll show you a, a, a configuration that will be, make stuff more clear. So uh, you can see that in IPFS compiling configuration, the node type is an embedded one. and for that embedded one, there's a special custom config which enables a API and gateway on TCP ports. So it's port 5002 and 1990. And if we want to play with those, voila. So what happened here, I loaded uh, API v0 ID path from API port, which is a REST API for controlling our daemon. Uh, so that's the powerful API. We don't have to enable API port. We can only enable the gateway. That's up, like, that's something we will decide uh, later, but for now we can see that it's a response from JS IPFS. And it's working just like you would uh, do with Go IPFS. And what's more interesting is that we also have the gateway port. And the gateway port is on 1990, and this is a directory listening from embedded JS IPFS. So that's fun. And 
I was very happy to to see that it just worked uh, after a lot of <laughs> fixes, but it works. So what does not work yet is like direct directory listing a work, but opening actual file returns some uh, unexpected JSON. I suspect that some polyfills are not uh, valid or there's some mismatch between polyfills and the node version we are running. So, uh, but it's something we should be able to fix. And another thing that does not work yet is uh, when I shut down the node, <laughs> it do does not really update the icon. So uh, it's another thing that uh, needs to be investigated, but uh, I'm very happy with uh, director list listing. So I wanted to share that with you. And uh, the plan is to uh, basically update this UI. So it has all those features that regular external node gives you. Uh, opening web UI with embedded node and stuff like that will go, go, like, be possible again. And we also would like to improve this part of preferences when probably uh, full configuration will still be valid, but things like con uh, configuring uh, different ports or providing automatic port discovery in case you have this port already used, uh, that things like that uh, will be very useful. So the plan is to iterate on that on the beta channel and we want to uh, experiment with UI using the beta channel and when we are happy with uh, the effect, then we'll probably start talking about adding a toggle in Brave Preferences to enable the stable channel. But for now, it will be opt-in uh, for the beta channel. Uh, so that was like a longer demo and I stopped sharing my screen, <laughs> but I maybe start again. Uh, so the plan is, uh, for the next week. If time allows, I will continue this work, but time will probably not allow <laughs> too much. Uh, so I just want to uh, uh, mention that we had some release, better releases of IPFS Companion as well, like for regular browsers. And there's like today <laughs> uh, with new web UI uh, and other betas are already there. So if you are in the beta channel, you will have those changes already. Plan is to promote those changes to the stable channel and spend the next week in Lisbon to hack and uh, plan our next quarter. And that's all. Sorry for taking no, it's time. Super cool. I can't believe you tricked a web page into opening ports and behaving as a server, and it didn't all work flawlessly first time. <laughs> uh, question, Alan, sure. Hi, Lido. Uh, Hi. I have two questions, if that's okay. Real, first one's real quick. The pull request, uh, you said it's work in progress. Is it, should, like, you requested a review. Shall I, shall I look on it or wait? Well, no, wait, wait. Uh, like for IPFS Companion, uh, we, are, we are having a Yarn-based build, build. So I just like hard-coded uh, specific commit. It does not block anything. And I don't want to like take your time until it's, stabilized okay. right cool uh, and the other question is uh more about the exciting demo that you just did um the swarm addresses i noticed they were empty are you going to start listening on swarm addresses so that we can so that like a local go could connect to it and uh my other question is does the is is um brave going to expose like mdns stuff is that possible through the chrome socket thing well, not really probably not Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, the, uh, like listening on the TCP port and basically enabling TCP transport, it should be possible to work on that because those APIs are already whitelisted. I just disabled everything apart from the gateway just to make logs clearer, but it should, it may just work or we may uh, invest some time, uh, but I, I believe uh, TCP transport uh, should we should be able to make it work with existing uh, APIs. For the local discovery and the MDNS you mentioned, uh, there's an API for local discovery in the Chromium OS, but I don't, I'm not sure if it's like uh, compliant with the spec that we plan to implement. 
uh, I believe that was like specific to old uh, draft on W3C, uh, like network discovery uh, spec. That's not the one we're using. So I did not dig into uh, deep into that, uh, but there's long story short, there's an API but I'm not sure if it's usable for our case. So we may be able to use it or we will have to build our own. The good thing is that we have access to UDP sockets, like raw UDP sockets. So the, so the worst case scenario would be we will like implement uh, like local discovery protocol in user land. Nice. Like, I mean, first step, it would be awesome to start listening uh, on TCP port for swarm connections and then get a local go IPFS to just do a swarm connect to the browser uh, and then that, should, that would just be rad that would be a good demo yep yep no, no more questions um, oh yeah go for it oh does this mean we can do all the fancy proxy stuff as well yes uh, so, uh, if uh, the HTTP proxy feature lands in JSIPFS, it would work here as well. Uh, that's a short answer. Can you expand on the fancy proxy feature? Uh, yeah, yeah, so like the fancy proxy feature is the idea that uh, our gateway port could double as an HTTP proxy so if you set it up as an HTTP proxy in your web browser and you request some magical host, let's say that IPFS, that local host, then that proxy would create the domain name on the fly and just respond just with that domain name, uh, giving you a sec origin-based security parameter and some other stuff. Um, yeah. Super cool, all right. Any other questions? No, moving on. Um, we've accidentally left this call at a time that Enrique can't join us, so I will announce his updates uh, because it's a good one. We released IPFS Desktop after much avoiding going public with all our hard work. We couldn't avoid it any longer, and we released it. So now there is a link to our desktop app on the ipfs.io website for the first time ever. And if you open it up, there's now handy dandy in links to installers for 0.7. And it's a real menu bar app now, no messing around. Uh, and we now can see downloads by uh, platform, which is kind of fun for our metrics gathering. You can see downloads by the current version. It's 419. We released that last night, and there's been 419 downloads already, so that's kind of fun. Um, that takes into account people who have already got it installed and have auto-updated. And if you haven't installed it yet, then you've missed out on the fun installer that Hack made, which has a gigantic globe and a, a solar flare. I mean, come on. And you can pop that in your applications and replace it. And, oh, MG megavolts. And you can open your first desktop and you can run it. And then at some point, you can open it because it's from GitHub. And then it might ask for more permissions. And then look at that. You've got a desktop and then on your, in your machine. If you haven't installed it, I've got some suits from the latest Google PFS. It is out there. We uh, found a bug in it. Hugo found a bug in it almost instantly, and it was an absolute showstopper, which is a timely reminder that uh, IPFS Web UI lacks sufficient end-to-end -end tests, particularly around the high-value workflows of adding files to IPFS. So that is now top of my list of things to do. Uh, but it's not about me. This is about Henry. Uh, what else did he do? Oh, he made he made life real good. No, that's some janky code that you don't have to look at. This guy, no, this guy, this guy, this guy website. Where is it? One of these things. Uh, you can now do IPFS. No, you can now do brew, brew, cask, info, IPFS. And wait a few seconds and OMG, you can install desktop from Homebrew. Uh, or if you're on Windows, you can install it from Chocolatey. 
So he's had a busy week and it, it's great. Da, 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 da. Uh, so he suggests that you go there and try. I suspect you all have already, but if you haven't, do. Uh, Alan Shaw, uh, any questions on the 0.7 release? Something in the chat? Uh, Alan says his is auto updated and that's good. I'm glad because we've also fixed a bug in that whereby on Mac auto update would fail if IPFS daemon took a long time to stop. So we have now ruthlessly added a timeout. Thank you to Hugo's work on IPFS control daemon. We give IPFS three seconds to shut down cleanly, otherwise, we shut it down uncleanly because we quite like the user experience of auto updating to work. Um, and the desktop app also knows how to recover from an unclean shutdown. So it seemed harmless, but I'm sure someone will tell me that that's a terrible idea at some point, but that's what's happening. Um, any questions? I hear silence. I can't see all your faces. Alan? I, I, I want to say something. Please do. Uh, so I saw your fix for the files, so it's working great. But I think the previews aren't working properly. The At frame. least, yeah, I tried like some pictures or image files for things like PNGs and JPEGs, and they don't load. Can it, that's uh, good feedback. I haven't seen that. That's not something that we know about, so please I, I, I may. Uh, uh, add an idea related to that because uh, uh, there's an extension called Privacy Badger, and mm -hmm. if you have it running on like localhost web web pages and stuff like that, and you have an image loaded from the public gateway on IPFSIO mm -hmm. by default, the default configuration will block the image. So I submitted uh, like a bug report to, to them that like IPFSIO should be whitelisted. It does not require cookies, so you can like block it sending cookies, but it should be whitelisted because um, it's useful and gave uh, a few links. Uh, you may check if you have it running. Uh, it yes. blocked, uh, in my case, uh, uh, some local websites, like uh, images on local websites. And that's like, a question is, shouldn't we use uh, like a local gateway instead of public gateway uh, for previous i think it's question? hard coded to the public uh, gateway you should absolutely use the local gateway 100 yeah. percent. yeah uh hugo uh, you should just file a issue on ipfs web ui and uh I'll take I have a look. An, an, another question how can we use a js team instead of coding in uh, in desktop yes uh, you can edit the uh, the config file that desktop uses to start its daemon advanced open configuration file uh, yeah but I would need to run manually and then configure desktop to connect to it yeah ultimately it's not a supported feature right now so you'd have to do some work uh it is a feature that has been requested please request i'll find the issue and put that a plus one <laughs> uh your unbounded generosity uh good thank you it's always good to get your feature requests live on camera um any other question no, good. That means I might get some work done next week. Uh, okay, Alan Shaw, do you want to share a thing? Ooh, okay, hi. Uh, can I just say, um, having desktop and companion on a website is super good, super good news. It's one of the first things that we talked about when we started working with companion. Uh, we were like, we just need the website to point people at these things. Some 18 months later. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, it's really nice to see. Um, okay, can you see my screen now? Yes. Pointing at the relevant document that we're all looking at. Also, yes. Yeah, it's good. Okay, cool. Um, all right.
Right, so you will probably already know it by now, but Go IPFS Depth, the NPM module that allows you to install Go IPFS, uh, was released uh, for the new version of um, Go IPFS. Last week, I think we'd released the pre-release version, but that was working, so I released it good and proper. Um, so that's good. Uh, so I okay. So this is kind of fun. Um, before uh, we couldn't uh, JS IPFS was not able to listen up. Oh. Uh, oh, I thought I did better, better docs for this. Um, no, that's kind of nice. I've got some multiple IPFS notes. No, that's, uh, this is completely the wrong board. I think the original <laughs> issue had like examples of configuration. Yeah, I think, hang on, let me just, uh, I've already, I put it in the release notes. So let's just open those instead. Um, cool, here we are. So. This is what I meant, this thing. Uh, so the new version of JS IPFS will allow you to listen on uh, multiple addresses for your API and gateway. Uh, and all you do is in your JS IPFS config, you configure it with an array of strings of multi-adders um, for either API or gateway. You can also have none and it will not blow up like it does currently. Um, and uh, I, think, I think Go does blow up currently, so yeah, that's fun. Anyway. So did that, uh, let's, uh, how do I move this thing out of the way? Get out of my way. Uh, no, wrong. Uh, here we go. All right. So fix for, oh, right. Okay. This is a fun one. I will update that other link before I leave. But so bleh, when you called cat, IPFS cat with like IPFS QM hash and a path to a particular file, uh, it wasn't working. Like you'd get back nothing and it would say that the file was not found even though it was there uh, so i fixed it so that you can now uh this one worked but it's just when it was deeper uh, that didn't work so now it works so hooray uh yeah so oh man okay so this is a new one that happened today um if your things are not compiling currently with azure or babel then uh that's possible Possibly because about 15 hours ago, Babel released a new version, uh, a new uh, minor release that um, actually will error if you've got two uh, duplicate de declarations of the same. Um, oh, let's just look at this. Let's, let's not use words. Uh, here we go. Look, one destroy, another function called destroy straight after it. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so this second one wins, so this one's completely redundant. Um, but the problem is that when this tries to get, if you're using stream to pull stream, um, the, uh, and, and you're using a new version of Babel or, um, or whatever, or just using Azure to build your things, um, then currently, if you're using this, then it will error and break, and um, it's because of this problem. There's a pull request open here. Um, yeah. I had to track that down this morning, which is kind of annoying because we didn't change anything. Things just stopped working. So anyway, that's that. And then last thing, last but not least, uh, is uh, the DAG HTTP API will be in 0.35, thanks to uh, Alex Scott's CDs. Um, I merged that in recently, uh, and it just adds DAG uh, API v0 DAG get, DAG resolve, and DAG put. Uh, so you'll be able to use them uh, from now on in JS IPFS. So that's that's cool times. Um, I'm blocked on um, libp2p. There is a uh, some features that have been reviewed that just need to make it in. Uh, well, they're kind of they are features, but they are also bug fixes at the same time. Um, so I'm wait, waiting on that from being released, and then I think that it all that's all that would be pending is um, any issues that we have from testing and interop. Um, but essentially, I will be starting the um, JS IPFS release train. Um, the bundle size stuff would, if if we can get that in, that would be nice. But uh, I don't know. I, I'm kind of like waiting and seeing on that one. Anyway, uh, but that can always be released as like a patch release anyway. So um, it's all good. So blocked on that. 
my next up is uh, to actually do that release uh, and I wanted to work, do some more work this week on the async iterators endeavor um, which I haven't been able to do for a while because I've been grinding on the 035 release for so long anyway that's me uh, any questions let me stop sharing the screen uh, lovely updates Alan <laughs> Uh, no questions, so let's move on. Who is next in the document? Da, 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 da. Yeah. Diego! Go for it. Can you guys see my screen? I sure can. Okay, so last week I did nothing because I was on vacations. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, this week I added the um, as I always showed, we had this cooking for a while in the IPFSIO website. Companion was feeling lonely in the implementations. We were just waiting for uh, this big release of desktop, basically the, um, the auto update and some other features. But now as it's been updated, we have the, the two main integrations here on the, on the main website. So I did this. And I've been working uh, almost of my time on the web UI help system. I'd say it's 90% uh, concluded. I updated all the tours uh, with some feedback that uh, some people uh, gave me. I added the tooltip for the first time that users come to the, to the web UI. Not sure, okay. So the first time you come here, we want to show that we have better tours. And the way to do that, my network is slow as always. Hmm. Right, sorry. Live demoing. <laughs> so what I'm doing is I'm, I have a flag on local storage saying if you already uh, did some action to that tooltip, it won't appear again. Okay, so the first time you enter on uh, any page, you have this tooltip here that's saying, hey, you can click on this button and uh, make the tour show on the, the current page. So on every page you, you enter, there's that. And when you click on it, it just disappears forever, or at least so it seems. Um, then what I've been doing too is, as I said, updating all the tours. And my main focus this week was plugging the, the, the translations here, because what I was doing I had like I had this uh, all the tours decoupled from the React components and uh, the library that we're using for the translations uh, works with React, but this wasn't React; it was plain JavaScript. So I had to find a way to plug the translations. Uh, so that's then uh, what's missing. It's just uh, the, in, the the explore uh, tour. Is that exactly yeah this. This page is tour that uh, for now it's empty because I, I have to find a way of doing this. I think I know a way of doing it. So I'm hoping uh, this next two days finishing it. So next week this is done and maybe have some feedback uh, and we can shift this. If you, have, if you guys have feedback, you can come to the, this pull request and uh, say your thoughts here. And any questions? I think that's it. Uh, just a, it occurs to me the the internationalization library that we use mm -hmm. um, is IAT Next, and it, it, the that is not aware of React. We also uh, use the React bindings for it, but can use it directly. Yeah, I was trying to, we have a function, the, the translate function. I was trying to, to use that uh, on the objects, but I, I wasn't 
being able to do that. So what, what I'm doing basically is, is passing that function on the React component and it fetches the files and runs that function there and it works. So we can, um, uh, yeah, we'll connect on that after the call. Okay. Cool. Okay, any other questions? Can't see all your faces and silence is going to assume Mr. Diaz is up next. Hey, Hugo, what do you want to share with us? Okay. So, what I've been doing, uh, I did a little bit of research about why the CLI doesn't work with IPFS. Uh, found a bunch of stuff. Uh, and now we'll try to fix it later. Because right now I'm trying to finish the bundle side stuff in time for the new release. Maybe, maybe not. Let's see. Uh, also did a review on the proper log file issue that we found and Alan found a way to uh, solve it. Uh, and yeah, basically all I'm doing is uh, finishing the JS APFS monosize pull requests, all the dependencies, uh, all the dependency related issues are fixed. I'm now trying to fix uh, internal or uh, internal code issues. Most of them are related to the new uh, way of validating the config. But others are uh, kind of weird, and I'm having a little bit of trouble finding the source of the issues. But yeah, I'll try to finish everything uh, this week. And I will work more on the view support and the single traders. And when the Lidl has his pull request uh, ready for review, I will also have a look at it. And that's it. Is there anything that anyone here can do to help you with the bundle size stuff? Alan says, please can has bundle size for the 0.35 release. Anything that anyone else can do to help? Uh, I will probably need help in uh, at least two of the issues I'm having now with the tests uh, because I, I have no idea who, uh, why they are happening and from the changes I did, it doesn't seem to be related, but uh, the fact is they are there and the tests are failing. So I'll probably ask Alan to help me out and review the code with me sometime like tomorrow or something when he has time. Okay, um, feel free to ask the rest of us before Alan, because he'll be trying yeah, to do that. Of course, stuff. sure, sure, sure. Um, super cool. Okay, next up, Oli Zilla. Who's that guy? It's me. Um, do, 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 do. I have largely uh, highlighted the interesting stuff they worked on. It was mostly IPFS desktop fixes for release. Um, I learned the hard way that you shouldn't mess around with regexes uh, without tests. And that led to us releasing. So the, the chain of events was we, uh, I did a big bunch of work to polish the analytics stuff. Um, and part of the analytics stuff is uh, looking at the Redux actions that WebUI does to tell us things like when someone makes a new directory or when someone adds a file. And uh, that used to be a very like fuzzy regex. So it was just like, look for actions that look a bit like this. Um, but that has the nasty side effect of you aren't being explicit about which actions you're tracking and so then you can't be clear to the users what being tracked so then as part of the work to make that more transparent that got converted into a very explicit list of actions anywho I messed around with regexes there was one action that I didn't spot that didn't fit the pattern so it got through to some code that it shouldn't have done and because my tracking logic is right up in the middleware of Redux when it failed it caused the file upload to fail which is terrible, and that whole path needs to be much better tested. Um, so anyway, WebUI had that bug in it in 2.4.2, and 
that made it into a desktop release and then I announced it to everybody and was like, go install it. And Hugo, bless him, he did install it. And he quickly told me about the problem. So we got a fix out in the next couple of hours uh, because that is bad because adding files is the core feature. Anywho, so that, that was a chunk of my week. Um, what else did I do? I am cooking up some ideas around building a service for, so a lot of my time has been taken up uh, reworking our continuous integration, continuous deployment pipeline for all of our websites. We have like way more websites than you think we do. However, however many websites you think we have, a lot, we have twice that amount and they all used to get built by Jenkins and now they don't get built or they are getting built by the new continuous deployment pipeline that I have started rolling out. Uh, which is great, but I was then super specific with my Docker image versions and my Docker image bakes in a version of the IPFS cluster control binary and they all point to our central IPFS cluster instance and Hector has released a new version of IPFS cluster. So there are like 20 pull requests that I've got going to add this to a quarter of our websites uh, now all need updating because I have to go and roll out, a, roll out a new Docker image with the new cluster control thing. So anyway, not very exciting, but that's that has led me to be thinking perhaps there's a better way of doing this. Um, so I spent a bit of time on day uh, setting up my own IPFS cluster on a digital ocean droplet and just running through the Ansible scripts and getting a feel for that process and it's pretty good. It worked and there was some holes in documentation so I patched those and I upgraded those things. That was a useful process and so now I'm fleshing out some notes in preparation for our meetup next week uh, to talk about the IPFS website deployment service that I've been experimenting with. Uh, but I haven't got anything to show for it right now. But that's where my time has gone. What else would I work on? Yeah, uh, yeah, docs, docs, install, bugs. I think we've seen all the best bits. So I'm not blocked in anything, and the rest of my week is going to be taken up with um, IPFS camp admin and uh, okay admin. So nothing too exciting for me. Um, Eric says, no noteworthy IPFS GUI work. Uh, is there anything that you would like to talk about, Eric, or you just want to listen in? And you think you had nothing noteworthy? <laughs> you got a you got a pretty smiley banana friend. Yeah, I did that. That was the that was the sum total of my accomplishments. No uh, worries. Yeah, not a lot of IPS IPFS GUI stuff, but uh, you know, Filecoin branding and other uh, non GUI type distractions. Looking forward to uh, that changing quickly with uh, next week and starting to get OKRs. OKRs figured out. Okay, no worries. Okay. Uh, no okay, R and R so far. Nice. He's back on it. You're you're well again. I can tell the puns are on the increase. Terry, would you like to share a thing? Hello. Hello. Uh, yes. So, in an effort to document things I've actually done instead of just feeling bad at my, about myself for not accomplishing anything. Let me just surface offline camp. I'm sure most of you have heard me go on about uh, the offline first movement before, but if any of you are excited about that and have friends who are excited about that, you should register your interest in this interest form. Um, and we make sure that people are know about the next event announced there. Um, Still top secret, dates and location. And then the biggest thing that I could use your help on, which I have mentioned before, but have made a lot more progress on, is that I'm working on a roadmap for Proto School as it prepares to be its own top level project. Um, the way that you can most help me is to suggest things that would help you accomplish your educational goals in the format of Proto School. So there's a link there to an issue that's open, which already has a few notes about for example, some content that might be created for IPFS camp, but I'm sure there are lots of ideas beyond that. And I'd love to figure out what's the best way to like capture stuff that's coming out of your big meeting next week or the week following or whenever it is. What's the best way for us to connect? If you want me to 
join you virtually for part of it, however you want to deal with that. Um, let me know. I think I think that one. I need to set up a schedule for it, and I think okay. we could just plan to have a like let's let's pin like forty five minutes or something like that. Yeah. We page in on things we can do for Proto School and things Proto School can do for us. Yeah, that would be lovely. Cool. And hopefully by then I'll be a little feeling a little more settled about the roadmap so I can give you kind of a sneak preview. The biggest piece that's relevant there is like, what are the limitations of the format? Because a lot of teams suggest things that are like way, they feel to me way out of scope. Um, so kind of honing in on like, what are the next things we can do? And what are the things that create a nice smooth content progression without leaving big gaps? Nice. Yeah, so let me know if you want to help with scheduling. East Coast friendly would be lovely for that chunk. But, but of course. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, it, this sort of time is okay for you, right? Indeed. Okay, we've dropped off the bottom of the list. Dietrich, you're so, so fresh, so clean. Uh, is there any, any feelings you'd like to impart? Any, what, what, are you, what are you looking at? How many documents have you read today? <laughs> you all have a lot of documents. <laughs> yeah. So so many, 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 many. I'm taking a really organic approach. I just, every time somebody like links to an issue in a repo somewhere that I think is interesting, I just subscribe. And eventually I will unsubscribe probably to a bunch of that. But I feel like that gives me this kind of, you know, higher level view of a whole bunch of different places in just a little slice. It's great because that's the only way to guarantee freshness. Like, if links are being shared now, they're probably relevant. If they're in, if they're in IPFS slash no, note, I'm not definitely going to yeah. class that next week. Very cool. To hang out with you all in person and really mm -hmm. see where you think things are going. Um, because right now, I feel like my yeah my view is still teeny 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 so. No worries. Okay. Um, there's no explicit agenda points. So if anyone has anything they desperately want to talk about, say now. Otherwise, we are in danger of finishing this. Oh, in danger of finishing this. No, Alan Shaw, please do. Uh, your video is frozen, frozen with your hand up. Uh, Am I here? No, you're not. What? There we go. Better? Stop moving. Do you know how bandwidth works? I know Hugo already mentioned that I don't think I, I forgot to mention it. I don't think I don't think it was ready last week, but yeah. Okay, start again. Okay. okay. Uh, I should have mentioned it last week. I'm going to share my screen quickly, um, but. The awesome thing that Hugo has done that uh, I'm not sure has been mentioned on this call is that the, is the bundle size stuff. And I know he did mention it in his update, but it's worth again because the HTTP client, which I released earlier uh, in the week, um, is so much smaller than it used to be. It's like it, it's like 3% or so smaller now, which is down as, as the progress have been merged and, and released. So this is good, all good work. And hopefully now that this is done, this is a major step towards getting the same. Um, so this is very cool. This, this is like a saving of uh, like, so this one, I have 200 kilobytes of non gzip data, which is just incredible. Um, so yeah, just thanks again, Hugo, for all of the work. We, uh, I mean, we got your, we, Alan, your bandwidth is not yeah. working. Your connection is not working. Um, it's the same as yours. We got the gist of it's your... It's the same as yours. No, mine's way better. <laughs> Apparently not, because he still moves and talks and we can understand him. <laughs> That's, I mean, but Sorry, Alan, was, Alan. Alan was trying to say it. it's, it's totally rad. Thanks, Hugo. It, we appreciate, we appreciate you. You're doing good work. It sometimes goes unnoticed. Yeah, come on in. 
Okay, you talk into the microphone. You did a good job. It's very good. Thank you. It's small now. Thank you. Thank you. Teamwork makes the dream work. All right. Well, this has been the IPFS in web browsers and GUI team weekly sync up call. The two working groups that could never separate remain stronger together. Uh, see you at the same time, same place next week. Ta-ra!